Dave Shondell, the veteran Purdue uh, volleyball coach, coming to Baton Rouge. Thank you so I don't have to travel to see a Big Ten team. I really appreciate that. And uh, homecoming for Faye Adelaja, who's from here. She is a nice surprise, right? Didn't she uh, come there and you were going to take a flyer on her and then she had to play as a freshman? Yeah. Um, we knew she was a, a terrific athlete. Uh, when she showed up, she was a little smaller than we thought. And so we weren't sure you know, what direction this whole thing was going to go. Uh, we had a, an injury to one of our middles, and so Faye had to come in in what we thought was going to be a redshirt year. She had to start every single match. Remember All that. we did was go to the Elite Eight, and uh, she hit about 375 uh, as a freshman and, and uh, has been uh, getting better every day since then. As we come into this tournament, you're here, it's Friday, you're getting ready to play LSU tonight after your first two rounds of non-conference tournament weekends. Uh, she leads the nation in kill percentage, doesn't she? I know she leads the Big Ten. Yeah. I don't know if she leads the nation or not. Um, after two weekends, things can be a little bit sketchy anyway, you know, yeah. as far as that's concerned. But I said to our team before the season started, I said, Faye's going to lead us in hitting efficiency. There's no doubt about it. That's nice. She says, well, she's a middle, so that gives her a pretty good advantage to yeah. have a high percentage. But she's a smart, um, savvy, um, and again, very high efficient hitter. So uh, we feel really good with our middles, and, and knowing that she's over 500 right now, take some pressure off the rest of our people. Uh, let's talk about the Purdue team. Um, last year, uh, when it came down to NCAA Tournament Selection Day, you, you were the 10th team out of nine teams that got in for the Big Ten. You made no secret of the fact that uh, you thought you should have been in, and certainly you, we, we all know you were better than a, a lot of the teams that were in, but that's just the nature of the way the tournament goes now because of the automatic bids and then the at-larges that come. Um, RPI is super important to you, and I've heard you discuss it before, and so now I'm throwing you the big softball and doing you a favor. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I don't want to really dive into it too much. I, it is what it is, and um, the only issue I have with, with, with RPI is some of it's out of your control. Um, and what people don't get is that we played in a tournament last weekend at St. Louis because we had to go back to St. Louis. We had an arrangement with them where if they came to our place, we're going to come to your place. I can't dictate to Kent Miller who he brings into his tournament. Now, fortunately, he brought BYU, who's going to be a very good RPI team, but also Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, kind of a young program that is probably one of the lower-level RPI teams. Great young coach, great kids on the team, but we would be better off, better off not playing that match from an RPI standpoint. Even though we won, yeah. it really rips your RPI. And so we worked a lot, a lot harder this year on trying to upgrade an RPI, even though we pretty much have the same schedule we've had for 13 years. Some good teams, some average teams, and then you know maybe a team or two that you don't have control over that, that you're going, going to have to play. Um, and then you also find that there's years where teams just don't perform like they're, they're supposed to. Opponents, you mean? Yeah, opponents. Yeah. You know, a year ago, um, we thought Moorhead State was going to be the ideal RPI. They'd won 30 matches in a row for uh, 30 matches, four years in a row. You know, they were supposed to be good again last year. Unfortunately, things didn't work out. I think they won three matches instead of 30. We had Notre Dame scheduled three years ago. We went to their place. They came back to our place. They were a traditional 25-match win team. Last year, they won six. And we're scheduled to play them again you know, this year because of that, that um, uh, contract that we had. And um, so things happen. Um, but luckily, the Big Ten this year is much stronger than it was a year ago. And even at the end of the year, the Big Ten was very good. But at the start of the year, there were a lot of young players playing. There were a lot of injuries. And so we took some, some um, losses early in the year across the board that impacted our RPI. And this year, I think our RPI collectively will be better. So I feel better. But once once you get hit with that, like we did last year, um, it kind of spooks you. you know. And so you, know, you think about it all the time, and you probably shouldn't. And uh, but we're going to try to go out and just win as many matches as we can let the ships fall as they may. It's always a good idea. Yeah. So if I made you the czar of the NCAA for a day, what would you change about the tournament or the selection process? Well, I think they need to look at, at more than the RPI. I think that, and they do, but that's the heavy, heavy part of it. This isn't like men's and women's basketball or football where they've got this committee of experts on the sport that study it all year long, you know, and they watch match after match after match after match. I think some of them do a pretty good job of trying to stay on top of it, but they get together for a weekend at the end of the season. And what they don't want to do is be subjective. They, they can't back that up very easily. So they look at the most objective metrics that there is and that the NCA supports, and that's the RPI. So I, I would suggest that volleyball is a pretty important game. There's a lot of people playing it. There's a lot of money going into it across the country. 
and uh, that the NCA puts a committee together that spends maybe a little more time. And I'm not knocking the committee. You know, they're doing what they what they're, they're supposed to do. They, they've got guidelines and they're following them. But I think that uh, you know there are there are going to be teams on the left out that whose kids put in a lot of work and effort. You know, we we finished fifth in the Big Ten last year. We had a a good schedule in the Big Ten, which helped us get to fifth. But uh, you know we were a good team. We were a tournament worthy team last year. Um, but that that season's over. So um, you know I, I think that uh, traditionally it's the mid majors that get screwed. So for me to be at a Big Ten university and, and be complaining about you know who gets in the NCAA tournament, really it doesn't make a lot of sense. And there's probably a lot of people thinking, what are you complaining about? You're in the Big Ten. And so um, and I'm a Ball State guy. I watch Ball State from the Mid American Conference get. Um, abused year after year when their basketball team was good enough to make the NCAA tournament and never did. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll accept the fate that, that we're given, uh, like we did last year, and we hope that we benefit from that. I think that this year's better because we didn't make the tournament last year, this year's team.